mitochondria are extremely important for the basic sustenance of every single cell in our body. It's so important for basic molecular processes. It's also extremely important for human diseases. And I just wanted to share with you a few tidbits, a few facts that we as a research or scientific community have learned over the last few years that suggest that perhaps having more focus, more awareness of mitochondria is not that crazy an idea. Um, the, the reason that cancer and stem cells are, are such a compelling uh, a set of, 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 of research areas is because we all know somebody that has cancer, so it's a very common disease. In stem cells, the reason that's such an exciting area of research is because if we can get stem cell biology to an advanced stage, they could potentially yield therapies, cures for a number of different types of disorders. And what I would argue is that mitochondria are in no different state. There are a number of individuals that suffer from some form of a mitochondrial disorder, either a primary or a secondary dysfunction of the organelle. And secondly, if we can come up with strategies for manipulating mitochondria that can help patients with primary mitochondrial disorders, this has a potential to benefit hundreds of millions of people worldwide. And I'm not exaggerating, I'm being scientifically honest when I make statements like this. So what are some of the facts? Well. Um, as Dr. Corson so eloquently stated at the beginning, mitochondria really are these power grids. They really are the powerhouses within our cells, and they're responsible for taking crude fuels like fat and protein uh, uh, and, and our other breakfast entities this morning and converting them into energy currencies, if you will, that the cell can use. So in the same way that a factory in East Texas will take crude coal or oil and convert it into jet fuel or electricity, our mitochondria take some of these precursors, food entities, and convert them into, into uh, an energetic equivalent called ATP. So they're really important for the sustenance of each cell. Over the last 15 years, what's also become quite evident is that the mitochondria helps the cell make life-death decisions. So our bodies represent a steady state of growth of new cells, and some cells need to be eliminated. That's a very natural process. This process of eliminating cells that might be a little bit damaged is called programmed cell death. And it's quite clear that the mitochondrion is the gatekeeper for the graceful exit of cells from our bodies. In addition to life and death decisions, the mitochondria is really important for synthesizing the building blocks of our body's cells. So as you can see, this organelle is really important for a number of different activities within our cells. Now, one nice measure of just how important it is, is asking how many genes are necessary to build the mitochondrion. Now, here in Massachusetts, at the Broad Institute where I work, back in 2001, the Human Genome Sequencing Project was completed. Um, and that was an international effort which was spearheaded by many groups, but primarily a group based in Boston. And according to the human genome sequence, there's only about 20,000 genes total in our genome. Of these 20,000 genes, at least 1,000 of them make components that build these power grids. And so that means one in 20 of all proteins on our body is localized to the mitochondria. That gives you some lower bound on how important the structure is. And over the last 20 years, it's become clear that defects in any one of those 1,000 components can give rise to the primary mitochondrial disorders. And that's what we as a group are advocating for today. But over the last five, six years, research from my group, research from other groups, has suggested that a number of common diseases, things like diabetes, things like neurodegen neurodegeneration, even certain forms of cancer, are actually due to dysfunction in mitochondria. Now, those don't have as such severe uh, 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 presentations as some of the primary mitochondrial disorders, but these secondary disorders tend to be associated with age. And so uh, with the research, uh, you know, I was asked to give sort of a biomedical researcher's perspective today, and as a researcher, what I'll say is there's growing interest in mitochondrial biology. There's growing interest in mitochondrial medicine. And I really applaud the efforts of this type of group for trying to increase the awareness of this organelle, because Increased awareness also attracts more physicians and more researchers into this area of inquiry as well. And the year 2008 is rapidly approaching, and my feeling is that 
as a community, we should be able to develop new diagnostics so that from a single tube of blood, we should be able to diagnose mitochondrial disease. We should have curative therapies for mitochondrial disease. And we need more physicians that take a, an interest in becoming a primary physician for patients with mitochondrial disorders. And it's only with increased awareness that these three goals can be achieved. So I applaud all of you for uh, uh, your efforts today. Thank you.